بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم الله والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله نستعين من آية نمبر 8 اليوم 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 نستعين من آية نمبر 8 what we basically covered up till this point is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened by um, placing the, the weight of the statement that is going to be said upon the Qur'an and upon the profound wisdom and the, author, uh, the authority of the Qur'an, well, Qur'an al-Hakim. And the opening of this surah basically lays a heavy emphasis on accepting the message and believing in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam إِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُسَلِينَ and then what is the crux of his message عَلَى صَلَاتُ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ تَنْزِيلَ الْعَزِيزَ الرَّحِيمِ how does he go about executing his message how, what, what main primary vehicle or tool does he have to convey this message that is the Qur'an itself بِتُنْذِرَ قَوْمَ مَا أُنْذِرَ عَبَاءُهُمْ فَمُعَفِلُونَ The primary people, the, the, the first recipients of the message are the people of Quraysh, of Mecca, of Arabia, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting the Prophet know that listen, it's going to require a lot of work, a lot of effort on your part, simply because their forefathers, no warning, no message was delivered to them. فَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ So you find them completely lost, completely heedless, unaware of, what, of what's going on with them. لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَىٰ أَكْفَلِهِمْ But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala balances the statement by saying, knowing the Prophet ﷺ, that he is somebody who will go above and beyond the call of duty, above and beyond what is required of him to the point of literally killing himself, if that's what it takes, destroying himself, you know, um, for the sake of people. And so that some way, somehow, they will listen, they will understand. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consoles him by letting him know the majority of these people, the punishment has been decided in their, uh, in their case, and they are not listening, and they do not expect them to believe. Don't be waiting for them to believe. This is what we're picking up from here today, and the reason why I wanted to reload some of what we have discussed, discussed in the past, in the last couple of days, is because the ayat, we're going to study three ayats today, inshallah, ayat number 8, 9, and 10. And these three ayat are basically an explanation of ayat number 7. Ayats 8, 9, and 10 will detail, will further elaborate the point that was made in ayat number 7. لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلِ That the decision has been made, will come to pass. It's officially decided, signed, sealed, and dated. عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِهِمْ In the case of the majority of them. And what is that? That the punishment of Allah will befall these people. فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ These people will not believe. Don't wait for them to accept iman. That's not going to happen. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to explain in these next few ayat. So ayat number 8, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ أَغْلَالًا فَهِيَ إِلَى الْأَذْقَانِ فَهُمْ مُطْمَحُونَ إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ أَغْلَالًا So let's go ahead and break down. I'll give you the rough translation first and then we'll do the word analysis. إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ أَغْلَالًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that most definitely we have placed in their necks أَغْلَالًا أَغْلَالًا collars or shackles like an iron collar, like a prisoner wears. So we place an iron collar, a shackle in their necks. فَهِيَ إِلَى الْأَذْقَانِ And the shackle is all the way up to their chin. فَهُمْ مُطْمَحُونَ So their heads are suspended, slightly raised, stuck in one position. Their heads are stuck slightly upwards in a, in, in a fixed position. Now what does this exactly mean? So Allah says, inna ja'alna. The first thing I want everybody to note here, and I'll come back and explain this at the end of our discussion. Inna ja'alna, here Allah is attributing the action to Himself. Very clearly. There's no doubts about it. Inna, most definitely, we. Ja'alna, we have made, we have put. And when there's this repetition of we, it creates a meaning of exclusivity. Most definitely, it is us and only us. It is we and only we who have done this. We have put in their necks. So Allah is exclusively attributing this action towards Himself. 
Now we'll come back and we'll discuss that in a, in a minute, but I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. Fi a'naqihim. A'naq is the plural of the word unuq. Unuq means neck. So Allah says in their necks. Aghlala, the word aghlal is the plural of the word ghul. And the word ghul refers to shackles, like the, the way you shackle a prisoner. So, and, and what's interesting about the word ghul is it's a very general word. So even handcuffs, or even shackles that would, you would put in somebody's uh, hands or somebody's uh, feet, uh, any type of shackles that would be put on a prisoner, the word ghul in classical Arabic refers to that. But since Allah has mentioned here the word a'nab, this is referring to shackles that are put around the neck of people, like an iron collar being put around someone. فَهِيَ إِلَى الْأَذْقَانِ Not only that, but these shackles, this iron collar that's being put in their neck, إِلَى الْأَذْقَانِ It's all the way up to their chin, right here. Meaning what? It's elongating their neck. And when you, when you push the neck up and you stick it in that position, you no longer have any room to move your neck around. And this is the point that's being emphasized. They've been shackled in such a way that their neck has no room for movement. There's no give in the shackle. They can't move their necks at all. It's completely stuck, frozen in this position. So what's the result of that? Now I need to explain this word. The, the root of this word, qamaha, it refers to when a camel, when a camel comes to drink water, and after it drinks water and it raises up its head, after having drank the water, and it just stands in front of the water, continues to stand there at the water, kind of looking down at the water, but it's raised its head, it's not drinking anymore. That would be called aqmah al That the camel drank the water and it has its head raised, and it's kind of standing over it, over the water. It doesn't completely move its head down to the water again. It just stands with its head raised above the water, maybe gazing down at that water. So that action refers to that. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also another explanation in the lexicon, is that sometimes they would tie the neck of the camel to its back in such a way that the neck of the camel would stay upwards to keep it alert, to keep it in a fixed position. When they wanted to walk, when they wanted the camel to walk or stand in a particular position and not move around, not have any flexibility, they would tie its neck up in such a way so it couldn't raise it, it couldn't lower it, it was kind of suspended, stuck in that position. So that would also refer to that, this condition, this state, this 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 word refers to that. So muqamahun means that these people have been tied into such a position, they've been put in such a position, as the pre, pre, as the ayah is explaining, where now their head can no longer move further up, nor can their head move further down, it's basically suspended in that position. And Allah is emphasizing this point that their head is stuck in this position, a slightly upward raised position, with the inability to move around at all, especially not lower the head. Under no circumstances can they lower their neck, can they lower their head. Now what is the implication of this? A few basic implications. First of all, this is talking about their arrogance. They were arrogant. The message was provided to them, a messenger came to them, the Qur'an was recited to them. They were arrogant, they were rude. They, they behaved extremely arrogantly. So it's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set this curse of arrogance upon them. Fine, you want to be arrogant? Now deal with your arrogance. So they were allowed to further indulge into their arrogance. And one thing that the Qur'an defines to us from the beginning, Surah Al-Baqarah actually talks about this a lot in the beginning. Arrogance is the number one obstacle to guidance. Arrogance is the number one obstacle to guidance. The leaders of Quraysh, they could not speak ill of the Prophet When they were given the opportunity to do, they couldn't say anything bad. No, he's, he's an amazing person. He's never lied. The Qur'an was so unbelievable, so attractive to them, they would go and at, at night quietly listen to the recitation of the Qur'an. So they themselves couldn't resist the Qur'an or the character of the Prophet still didn't believe yet. What's the obstacle? What's getting in the way? It was arrogance. It was arrogance. Abu Jahl, there's even a story, a narration about Abu Jahl being asked, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is he a liar? No, he's not. What about the Qur'an? It's unbelievable. So why don't you believe? And he said, he said, look, we're Banu Amr and they are Banu Hashim. We have a rivalry. When they do something, we do it better than they do. But if we accept Muhammad as a messenger of Allah, 
We accept this Qur'an as a word of Allah. That's not something we can duplicate. It's not something we can beat them at. This is unique. We've never heard, never seen anything like it before. And probably we'll never ever see or hear anything like it ever again. So we can't beat them at this. So if we accept it, we lost. So what's the better route for us? We'll just refuse and resist. Arrogance. So this arrogance that they have, it's as if Allah is fixing them, cursing them with their own arrogance. Fine, keep, keep your arrogance. Let's see how far it takes you. The other implication of the statement of their head being fixed in this position is that, as we're going to see in Surah Yasin later on, in the entire Quran talks about this, I mean, in Surah Fusilat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even says, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْعَفَاقِ وَفِي إِنفُسِهِمْ We will very soon, we will show them our miraculous signs in the horizons and within themselves. Surah so Al-Naba talks about the wonder of Allah's creation all around us. Surah so Yasin is going to talk a little bit about it. Surah so Al-Mulk talks about, look at the earth, look at the sky. So that's how people recognize, realize, that's what humbles them. When they look around them and they see the sky, the earth, and the beauty of Allah's creation, it hits them. We read the ayat today at the end of Surah, uh, Surah Ali Imran, in the خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لولي للباب That in the, inter in the creation of the heavens and the earth, the interchanging of night and day, there are miraculous, clear, unavoidable, uh, immutable signs. For who? لولي للباب For people who are of intelligence. Have the ability to critically think. So, if they look around them, it'll humble them. It'll make it obvious. It'll humble the person that's, I have to believe in Allah. How can I explain all of this? But when their necks get stuck in such a position, they can no longer look up and admire the sky. They can't look down and look at the earth. They can't look up out the mountain and see. They can't look at the ocean. It's as if their head is stuck. They'll never be able to see all the beauty that's around them. The magnificence of Allah's creation all around them. So it's further drowning them in their own arrogance, in their own uh, ignorance, and in their own... Uh, uh, it, it's, they chose a path for themselves, and that's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, you've made a choice for yourself, now live with your choice. Now live with your choice. إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ أَوْلَادًا فَهِيَ إِلَّا لَثْقَارٍ فَهُمْ مُقْمَحُونَ Now, the last thing that I want to point out here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this in the past tense. إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ We have already put, we have made in their necks these scholars. So the fact that it's in the past tense, some scholars have the opinion that it's talking about here and now in this world. That this is a metaphor. This is giving an analogy, an example of what their condition is like. That their spiritual condition, it's as if their neck had been fixed in that position and they could no longer move their head and look around. Some Mufassilun say, they actually say, no, this is talking about the Day of Judgment. That this will transpire with these people on the Day of Judgment. That they will be shackled in this way on the Day of Judgment, no longer able to move their head and submit themselves and humble themselves before Allah. And the past tense is being used to confirm that this will most definitely happen. It's so sure the fact that this will happen, assume as if it's already occurred. You know when something is so guaranteed, it's as if it's already happened? So that, that's the tone of the ayah. Either way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But the ayat that are unfolding, that are coming here, the next two ayat we're going to study now, they make it more obvious, it, it makes it more apparent that this is talking about their situation, their condition in the life of this world. That this is metaphorically, this is talking about their situation in this world. In ayah number 9, the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُوصِرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that and we have placed, we have made all the way from in front of them a barrier and all the way from behind them a barrier فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ and we have covered them فَهُمْ لَا يُوصِرُونَ and they can no longer see they, can, they cannot see anymore so what does this exactly mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is further continuing that analogy. The, 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 how pitiful their situation is. And how truly cursed these people are. وَجَعَلْنَا Allah repeats the word جَعَلْنَا. By repeating the word جَعَلْنَا, He said in the previous ayah, 
inna ja'alna fi alaqim. Here again he says ja'alna, and we also made. So the scholars explain that this is actually talking about a different barrier. The first thing is their internal obstacle to seeing the truth. The internal obstacle to seeing the truth. Their arrogance has such a hold of them, it's like their head is stuck. Their neck is stuck in a position they can't look up, down, around. They can't see anything else. So it's the internal obstacle. Now it's talking about the external obstacle. That even if they were able to get some of their internal issues, there's external issues as well. There's external barriers to them believing as well. And what are they? مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدَّ In front of them there is a barrier. And the word said in the Arabic language refers to a barrier that is a barrier between two things. Something that prevents two things from coming together. So it's a barrier between them and guidance. Them and iman. And Allah adds the word min. Min بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ This means all the way from them there is a barrier. Meaning this barrier is touching them. It starts right there. It's, it, they're like squeezed between two walls. So once again, just like their neck was stuck in such a position that the head couldn't move, they are stuck between two walls, two barriers, so tightly stuck in between there that they can't move. I mean, just try to picture. There's very powerful imagery here. Try to picture being so tight, stuck, stuck in such a tight spot, such a tight place between two walls where you can't move. Imagine the, 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 the suffocating, um, and the, the, be, being so suffocated, being so trapped in a situation. This is their condition. So it's not as if this is a very comfortable lifestyle that they have. It's suffocating to them themselves. And that's very obvious when you look around and you see people who are away from Allah, who are away from guidance, and they're in difficult lifestyles. Sometimes their own situations, their, their lifestyle is their own predicament. It's a very suffocating, very difficult very narrow life. There's not much to look forward to in life for people. And this is their situation. And from behind them, there's another wall that's absolutely touching them, locking them in, blocking them in, trapping them, that extends from behind them. And not only that, so their, their necks are locked up in this position, there's a wall all the way in front of them, there's a wall all the way pressing them from behind, and on top of them there's something that's covering them up. Like when you cover up something. You put something over it and you completely cover it up, so now they can't even see daylight. Look how trapped they are. They can't even see anymore. They're completely trapped in this situation. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the 10th ayah, the last ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَخْشَيْنَهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ وَسَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَهَنْذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنْذِرْهُمْ لَا يُبْنُونَ And it is equal. سَوَاءٌ It's absolutely equal. It's the same. Doesn't make a difference. أَهَنْذَرْتَهُمْ Whether you warn them, and remember we talked about the word meaning of idha. It means to warn somebody of imminent danger out of care and concern for them. So it doesn't matter how concerned you are for their situation. Whether you have warned them, or you have not warned them. They will not believe. It will make no difference in these people. They are not going to believe. Now, one question I'll answer here and then we'll go back and we'll just summarize these three ayat that we've studied. What's the point of giving da'wah then? Why even give the da'wah? If, if you warn them, if you've warned them or you haven't warned them, it doesn't matter, it's equal. That you know they're not going to believe. Then why even bother? Why, why bother? It's pointless. In Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah number 164, Allah addresses the same question. وَيَطَالَتْ أُمَّةُ مِنْهُمْ لِمَ تَعِدُونَ قَوْمًا When some people amongst them, they, they, they say, لِمَ تَعِدُونَ why, why are you warning these people? Why are you advising these people? Why are you talking to these people? Why? Because Allah muhlikuhum, oh mu'adhimuhum adhaban shadida, when Allah is going to destroy them, and Allah is going to give them a very severe punishment, why even bother talking to these people? Qalu, they reply, the messengers, they reply by saying, ma'adhiratan ila rabbikum. So that they have no excuse left with your Lord. That when they stand before Allah on the day of judgment, there are no excuses. That the messenger can stand there, stand there and say, I left no stone unturned. I did what I could, Ya Allah. Even when you said it didn't benefit them anymore, I still preached to them. The messenger can stand before Allah and say, look, I did what I could. 
Those people, when they stand before Allah, they, can, they can't make any more excuses. So it completes the argument. There, it, it, basically, it solidifies the situation. And at the same time, subhanAllah, it teaches us to never give up on people. Maybe, hopefully, possibly, they might realize what they're doing wrong. Maybe they'll become conscious of Allah. You never know. Allah knows who's going to believe and who's not, but do, do, do you and I? We don't know. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after, maybe the day after, maybe, we don't know. We never know who's going to listen to me. Abu Sufyan accepted Islam 20 years after the first day of revelation. 20 years. After fighting in the battlefield, building armies, and launching attacks on Medina, time after time, 20 years later, Rabbi Allah He's a Sahabi messenger of the He's a companion of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi So you never know. So first of all, it completes the argument. I will have no excuses when I stand before Allah, I have done my job. They will have no excuses when they stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, you just never know when somebody will believe. Now to conclude here, the, what I wanted to end on is that interesting point that I mentioned to you in the beginning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very obviously, very clearly attributing all of this to Himself. إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا فِي Allah says, we did this. We did this to them. So that trap that they're in, that horrible situation that they're stuck in, Allah says, we did it to them. Now that makes you ask the question, why is Allah doing it to them? Doesn't He want them to believe? So here's the thing. The Qur'an, when you take a, when you, when you take a step back and you look at the bigger picture in the Qur'an, when you study the Qur'an overall, and you study all the themes of the Qur'an, and how the Qur'an talks about guidance, what you realize is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and other places in the Qur'an, He explains this thing very clearly to us. The first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us is the simple fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has first of all sent guidance. Guidance that is clear as day. Guidance ayat. سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي Allah has sent guidance, he has sent the kitab, he hudan, guidance, rahmat and mercy, messengers, prophets, he's placed signs all around us. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has basically put indicators, has put little things that can lead us back to Allah all around us all the time. Even within yourselves. So first of all, Allah has made guidance very, very easy, very accessible, very clear. It's everywhere, everywhere you look around you. Look at the camel. How it was created. How the sky was raised. How the mountain has been erected. How the earth has been spread. It's all around you. Alright, you have to try to not look for it in order to not be able to see it. That's number one. Secondly, alright, now if these signs were all around us but we didn't have the ability the, uh, and the faculties to access them, then that would be pointless. So Allah says what? Allah says we created the human being, but at the end of the ayah Allah tells us something very interesting, very important. Allah says we created the human being, why? So we could test him. But in order to test him, we gave him what? Sami'an basiran. We gave him the ability to hear, the ability to see. In other places in the Quran, Allah tells us, He gave the human beings the ability to think, comprehend, walk around, look around, feel, understand. He gave us all the faculties that we would need. And then, so He gave guidances all around us, sent messengers, sent down divine revelation, places miraculous signs all around us. Gave us the ability to see them, hear them, think them, understand them, and comprehend them, and ponder them. And then thirdly, what does he say? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He gave the human being a clear choice. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُورًا Who wants to believe, let him believe. Who wants to disbelieve, let him disbelieve. We made everything clear as day, we laid it out, we gave you the ability to think. Now go out there and figure out whether you want to be shakiran or you want to be kafur. Whether you want to be shakir, you want to be grateful to Allah for what He's given you, and realize, and then follow through and give Allah His right, or kafur, 
Or you want to be ungrateful to Allah. And you want to disbelieve in Allah. And you don't want to acknowledge what Allah has given you and what He's created. So Allah gave us the signs. He gave us the ability to comprehend the signs. And He gave us a choice. He gave us the choice. Now you decide what you want to do with this. Do you want to understand what needs to be understood? Or do you want to turn away from it? Do you want to continue to be arrogant? Do you want to remain ignorant and do you just not give? Do you just not care? You just don't care. If, so you make that choice. Once somebody makes that choice, now think about everything Allah has done for him. Placed signs around him, sent the messenger, sent the book, made guidance easy, accessible, right there, under his nose, placed it right here. Gave him the ability to access it. Every opportunity to have it. Gave him the total freedom to choose it. Choose it on your own. And despite all of this, if a person that says, not interested. Now this is where Allah says, Inna ja'alna fi So Allah says, I did put them in this situation. But don't forget what happened before they fell into this situation. They walked till here. So it's like somebody who walks to the edge, to the ledge, and then jumps off. He's asking for it. This person has asked for this to happen to him. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making apparent here, that these people have chosen this for themselves. Like I mentioned about Abu Jahan, somebody who cannot, in good conscience, in his right mind, call the Prophet sallallahu a liar, has to admit he's truthful. Somebody who cannot stand there and say that the Qur'an is not special. He, he's forced to admit this is unbelievable, this is amazing. This is amazing, it's not from a human being. And still to stand there and say, but I still disbelieve. Because I don't want to. Because I think it's beneath me. Because I don't think I should have to. Whatever his reason is, that person is basically asking for whatever is going to come to him. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making obvious and making apparent here. Inshallah, the next ayat that we study will then talk about the other group of people. Then who will heed your message? Who are who have been you? If you've been sent to warn and preach and teach, but these people are obviously it's not benefiting them, who does it end up benefiting? We'll talk about those, those people, inshallah, in the next session. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to practice everything that's been said and heard. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashhadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfirka wa natubu.